I'm Michael Arches. You're the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special at Be, Ter at Be Terrific TV on all social media. And of course, you can reach out to us on our Slack chat or to join our Slack chat with your wonderful feedback as well. Connect at BeTerrific.com. I've got the Dr. David Milch, the hey, good Michael, doctor. How are you doing today? I am doing great. I'm we're so excited. I'm pumped up. Jacob K. Javits Center, famous yep. senator from New York State, and we're here in the famous Be Terrific set at the uh, at the Center for Toy Fair. Do you remember when this building was built? They had a lot of problems getting it built. It took a lot of time, Absolutely. a lot of delays, and New York so badly needed a major convention center. We had a, a convention center that was too small. Right. It was so small that big events like Toy Fair at the couldn't be him exactly. Yeah. That's where everything was being done. And, and couldn't be held there and because of And there was a of lot it, yeah. of uh, conflict and controversy. They said, why are you going to build this huge palace? It'll never be filled. And within three or four years, it was too small again yeah. because there was such a demand. And, and they're still renovating it and making it larger. Exactly. The Crystal Palace. Yeah, the Crystal Palace. Um, and then they had to figure out, they made the whole building glass, or the first part of it, right. and they had to figure out how to wash the windows because they had no place to attach the window washing uh, equipment. And then um, before Javits Center, Toy Fair was at the toy building. Exactly. Yeah. And and so I'm sure that our next guest, Tom, remembers that. He has been at Toy Fair and involved in the industry since 1968. You're a legend in the industry. And not only do I have to thank you, but children everywhere have to thank you, including my son, Jack, because you created little tykes. And then you kind of retired from the business and you started a, another company and then you retired from the business and now you're on your third company because apparently retirement just doesn't suit you. You're right. <laughs> Welcome to, to the be program. Back in the business. How, I mean, how did you come up with the idea for Little Tykes? I, I remember having a Little Tyke and uh, loving it. I had, I think, the red car with the yellow roof was yeah. was my favorite it was one. A cozy coop. Yeah, and and it's still made today. It is. Yes. How'd you come up with the idea of Little Tykes? I, I, it, uh, it came to me as a result of my experience with a process called rotational molding. And rotational molding is a very unique manufacturing process for plastics. And with that, I moved, we, we were in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, and I moved to uh, Ohio to get into this business. And with, with rotational molding, we could do things much differently than had been done. Larger, more creative shapes and designs. Uh, very dependent on great a great workforce, which we've had with each company. And uh, we're uniquely different because of that process, and that so, allowed us to make products like the Cozy Coop. So when you say rotational molding, yeah. this is a process engineering solution, it, it, right? So exactly. it sounds like you have some engineering background that you brought to the table. Not when, formal. When I hear someone talk, not formal. Not formal, but I haven't, you know, I was involved with rotational molding in a company called uh, Wonder Products way back in, uh, in 1968, and uh, Wonder Products was the Wonder Horse, if you remember that. Uh, that was the spring suspended hobby horse, but we did rotational molding there, and that's where I got my first experience with it. Well, we're both old enough to remember the movie The Graduate, and the that's famous right. line in The Graduate, what should you go into, ben? Plastics. Plastics. Plastics, So you boy. went into plastics early on, I probably did. before seeing That was very humorous when we moved up to Memphis from uh, North Carolina. <laughs> so, and a lot of people, when they look at a toy like this, which is so functional, seems so simple, but to make it durable, to make it safe, there's yeah. a lot of thinking that goes into the design and, you know, the execution of these products. There absolutely is. And uh, there's only really very few rotational molders in the country. <clears throat> you know, rotational molding represents 1% of the total plastic processing processes. But uh, being able to make products like this is dependent on that process. And uh, we've got great people that help to make it happen. And uh, Well, we're fascinated to hear the backgrounds and the stories because besides the toys themselves, which the Terrifics love to learn about, it's the stories of the entrepreneurs that have brought these companies from early stages and the many cycles. So it's, uh, at one point, your company was purchased by that's Rubbermaid, right. is that? Rubbermaid, right? uh, purchased uh, Little Tykes in 1984. So you went from having a, a smaller company in which uh, you probably knew everybody from day number one to being yep. part of a larger organization. That's right. What was that like? It was fine for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then they wanted to help us. Right, and, exactly. Uh, I actually uh, continued to manage it for another five years and, uh, and left in 1989. 
when the company was a three hundred million dollar company with seventeen hundred employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, the non compete was no longer. Uh, it was two years. Two years. So you, you the handcuffs were off. Yeah. And uh, in two years, a number of my associates came back to me and said, "Why don't we?" Uh, why don't you get back in? Why don't we start another company? So the same employees that had had a great experience with you and said, "Tom, you know, what have you been? Uh, what are you spending too much time on the golf course?" Uh, right? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and you know, I was ready, and uh, we started uh, step two uh, in 1991. And, step uh, two. Step two. That oh, st st second company, step two, That's also right. a toy company. That's right. And. Uh, Step two was a great experience. We had a wonderful group of people there, and our success was was excellent. And uh, in 19, uh, let me get straight here. In 2007, we sold that business to a private equity firm in New York. So you've had the experience of starting, building, and selling two companies. Right. And what are you going to do for your third act? We're not going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got a great group of people, and they'll continue to run it. How did you decide to do Simplay Three? You said I just retirement does, doesn't suit me. That's right. I I was re I enjoyed retirement for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then you say to yourself, Why am I doing this? Uh, particularly when you you're still excited and anxious about doing some things, and we had some ideas, and uh, so we started uh, Simplay Three, and uh, I love. Uh, coming up and creating products like this with our design team, uh, which is a great group, um, and and seeing the success that we can achieve, and it's it's building a team again. Yeah. yeah. And, and most of our team uh, have, have been drawn from the former two companies. Fantastic. A lot of loyalty. How does yeah. how do the products change? So first of all, you do little tykes, and I imagine when you started little tykes. There were some people, or maybe a lot of people, who thought the market doesn't need this, or you're crazy. Right. It wasn't an overnight sensation, no, was it? it? Wasn't. And and how did you get going? Did you go basically door to door to? At, at that point, there were mom and pop and independent toy stores all over the country, maybe more popular than the retail the chain. Distribution models had changed. A lot of large players came in. Online retailing. How have you right. adjusted to all of these changes? Well, first to answer your question, uh, toy show. I mean, it's, it's when you. Fortunately, we met a lot of people, and uh, I've had experience with the Wonder Products Company in uh, coming to the toy show, and so when we had our own company, uh, I, I knew a lot of the players, and uh, that helped. And, and fortunately, we came up with some exciting products that got us off the ground. And then, how, have, how has the, <laughs> as David said, how has the distribution model changed from Little Tykes to Step 2, and, and today you've got... Amazon, the internet, you've got big box stores, right. very few mom and pop and independent toy stores. Well, let me tell you that, that with each one of our companies, we uh, one of the key features of our presentation has been we want to make sure our customers are profitable with our products. And we frankly have shunned away from the mass merchants in favor of uh, dealing with the smaller accounts. Um, I could go into details on that, but I don't, it, it, that is a, a key premise to everything we do and has been with each company. It, it's so hard for people, I mean, I talk to companies in every field and they tell me it's so hard to resist going with an Amazon or it a is. big box, but it winds up cutting the profit margin for everybody and then hurting, as you said, the mom and pop stores. You're absolutely right. And, and this is a problem in this industry. It's, it's a problem for the entire retail industry. Exactly. Uh, you know, where are we going with, you know, like you buy things at Amazon for much less than, than you can do through a retail store. Well, you've demonstrated in your career long-term vision. Yeah. And loyalty is something that doesn't happen overnight. So you've been loyal right. to your customers. They have trust and confidence in you, and that's what enables you to plan for the long term you're, you're for your absolutely success. Absolutely right. And uh, we've got wonderful connections with uh, long term customers, and uh, you know it's wonderful to be back with them. And, yeah. and uh, we look so forward to. I have a question yeah. for you. We have a lot of budding entrepreneurs in the Terrifics. Over the last two days, a number of. Uh, the, uh, the founders and the, the senior management of some of the companies that have been on set are very young, in their 20s. It's yes, fantastic right. to see new blood. 
I like to say that uh, the world is a wash in information, there's a sea of information. And individuals that are diligent you know, in terms of getting a good education and getting experience, they can get a silo of knowledge. But what a lot of people, especially young entrepreneurs, lack is the wisdom, the umbrella that comes from experience. So for those entrepreneurs out there that would like to break into the toy business, that really are dedicated and care and have an understanding of process, an understanding of marketing, what kind of wisdom could you impart to them of the things that they might not know without making mistakes? So it's good to make mistakes, but maybe to avoid some because of your experience. Well, I, I think you've got to be careful not to follow conventional wisdom. And I think it's also very important to make sure you've differentiated yourself and brought something new and exciting to the business. That's critical. Uh, rotational molding, frankly, is what has allowed us to do this right along. Um, rotational molding and having the support of, you know, in, in the United States, um, well, in the entire plastics industry, rotational molding is 1% of the total. And the reason is because of the labor intensity. We have been successful because of our ability to communicate, reward, and uh, have, have a wonderful teams who make the process work. Whether it's in the, in the manufacturing area, uh, office area, or wherever it might be. So if a young entrepreneur wants to come down and visit you and you know, take a tour of the plant and sure. uh, get an opportunity to meet some of the people that have made uh, this company such a success, are they, I'm going to reach out to the Terrifics and uh, open up the door for them to contact you That's and great. Uh, take a visit. Thank you very much for including me this morning and, and uh, Th nice to chat with both Th of you. Thank you for being here. Um, before we let you go, what is this product called? It's it's the Simple 3. Uh, it's very this cool. This is the Super Coupe Pedal yep. Trike. I like it. Super yeah, it's, cool it's pedal uh, trike. gotten an outstanding reception. It's a very different uh, approach to the uh, big wheel. Uh, you've got the function of the big wheel, but you've got the coupe feeling from the same thing we achieved with the cozy coupe. Yeah. The roof and uh, a child. It's very Children smooth. love it to get so into a, uh, a product that's got a roof like that. I, I know that my son, who's three, would absolutely love that. And if we had him here now, you, we wouldn't. He, this wouldn't be on set. He'd be riding around the whole place. Hey, how does it? Him. How does it differ from uh, you know from little tykes and from step two? Are there different things that you've kind of changed or updated uh, as time goes on or is it look the process worked let's just change the designs and, and come out with something a little bit different if you have to do that yeah you can't uh, we don't want to copy them we want to be unique and different if, you, if you're not unique and different you're not going to succeed in this business or many businesses well it's an honor and a privilege to have you on thank you so much thank you um, very much man. you're a legend in the business you've touched so many children's lives and changed their lives and i'm a car nut and i would say that a, a large part of that has to be getting in my cozy coupe back in the early 1980s and riding around non-stop i literally remember having a a Nerf basketball, a, a New York Mets uh, little baseball bat, souvenir baseball bat, and riding around in this thing like it was the bullpen car. Yeah, great. <laughs> so, Tom, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Pleasure Sim sir, having you. Simplate Great 3 is yeah, the company. You. It's a phenomenal company, and he is a, a legend in the business. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We'll be back with a whole lot more of your live continuing coverage of Toy Fair 2017 right after this. Stay with us.